Hello everybody, welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Seema Mehra Parihar, teaching resource geography for last 30 years in Delhi University. And uh, today we are going to discuss approaches in resource management. And as by now we all have learned what is a resource, what is natural resource management, what are different research needs, requirements and also in the last lesson that you've learned, you've also learned how to generate an hypothesis. Let's take our journey forward in learning the approaches in resource management. The learning objectives are following. Number one, we'll be able to enumerate different approaches relevant to understand and study natural resource management. Second, we'll be able to examine the present capitalist mode of production and derive a sustainable approach to counter the same. And also, we'll be able to discuss the future trend in approaches to resource management. The key words for this lesson are NRM approaches, physical milieu, perceptual knowledge, PAVE theory, total catchment management, and geometrics. So now, let us get going with our lesson on different approaches. We all know by now that man has been exhausting the earth resources ever since he came down and today what we are seeing is that we are only talking about sustainability, we are talking about big population, we are talking about rising living standards but the question is will we ever be able to match them. By now if you remember your first lesson you know it was that resources are not they become. Resource management goals also have to be so different and have to be so well defined that so that we all remember that ultimate aim of all of us is natural resource management. And that's so important that we all today in geography are studying resource geography. So in case if you look at it, what are these different goals which we all geographers have to follow? Of course, they all have to be of interdisciplinary nature. Why interdisciplinary nature? Because geography subject itself is talking about spatial patterns and different literature reviews have also told us about all these different approaches from different subject matters. But the problem is, what is the problem? Reckless exploitation. And if you remember Mahatma Gandhi, man is enough for man's need but not enough for man's greed. Greed is something which we all have to take care of. We are not happy with the interference with our natural systems. That is the reason currently what is the problem. We have social problems, economic problems, political problems and so on. But all of them are talking about one word that is resource management analysis. So the major focus of attention for the geographer interested in resource management should be to clarify the various issues involved in order to provide a clearer basis for public judgment and social action. As geographer, we believe it is vital to emphasize that some of the most significant problems in resource management can be examined only in their appropriate local and spatial settings. That is, we must never lose sight of undeniable authenticity, accuracy, uniqueness, economic, political and physical milieu of each region. Remember, we all have to be very familiar with our neighborhood and we all have to be sensitive towards this neighborhood. So, of course, I know that by now you all are also sensitive to your neighborhood. So, now let's just list these seven approaches which we are going to study. Number one, ecological approach, number two, economic approach, number three, behavioral approach, number four, integrated approach, number five, institutional approach, and number six is community-based approach, and number seventh is technological approach. So now let's deal with each one of them one by one. First is ecological approach. This approach is also called physical science approach and it focuses largely upon natural sciences, the good earth and the empirical method. These are generally shared by different disciplines and all those papers also which you all have studied in the subject. Geomorphologists, climatologists, hydrologists, biogeographers, they all talk about ecological approach. They also discuss in their own style and words and uh, bibliography in their own way on ecological approach. This approach stresses upon nature and limits of that resource but is silent about the human implications. 
That means we forget that there's law of diminishing returns. We forget that you know a stage comes when the increasing return also has to retard, and there will be a problem. Climate change is one of them. And so now we all have to take care. We all have to remember these interacting elements has some interference coming from a human being. We must understand these me mechanisms, and this approach guides us towards those physical milieu around us. Every intervention modifies this dynamic effects of the interactions, and so does every development. Perhaps more significant is the fact that in order to attain the required goal, resource development should take full account of these dynamics, interrelationships, interdependencies. If something goes wrong in one, the other will ultimately also get goes wrong. So there's a topsy-turvy effect. Knowledge, dynamics, interrelationships, of all elements of the organisms, whether we are touching them or not, impact our ecology. So we have to keep in mind that ecological approach is very important. Over the last few decades, the conservation lobby has become more vocal and effective. And we are not even very happy with the conservation. We're talking about the natural resource management. And also, it was becoming increasingly unacceptable because this damage that is happening to our surroundings around us could have serious, and is having also, we all are seeing that, repercussions for mankind. Flash floods, a lot of other things, earthquakes, tsunamis, and all those happening at the wrong times. Understanding of the ecological processes is becoming so diverse that we also have a thing, oh, is it actually happening? But I didn't do anything harm with it. And if you all remember what's happened with the Paris impact on this global warming also, people are saying one thing, but are doing something else. So resource management involves goals of output maximization, not only physical touching, cost reduction, along with protecting the producing capital of resources for the future zones. So now, let's come to our second approach. So that means what we are talking about is anybody, if you talk about the resource, any human being, what they'll word will talk about, the word that starts with P called profit. Profit, is it good or is it bad? I want luxury, but can I compromise with the things which are around me? Or I want only maximizing the production which is there? Because I want progress. For me, that's a narrow definition of the development in my mind. Greater the likelihood that it will, because of that, what we need is a synthetic ecosystem, which is not natural, and which we all have to remember is something which is so inhuman. So let us now, besides the ecological approach, which is so physical, let's add another dimension. So the first is one E, come to the second E called economic approach. Economic approach, what is it? Economic, you all know, means money, finance, profit. And that's what it is. It largely deals with the resource allocations. It's an economist-driven approach. Various ways of natural resource management are there, and they're very important contributions which are also there in resource allocation research study, in understanding the processes operating the resulting outcomes, analyzing who has the power to determine the distributive, distributive patterns, which we all geographers love to study, in finding the homogeneous and heterogeneous parts, assessing the role of efficacies of public policy measures, so, in case if we do that, the word that crops into your mind is wealth. But there's another W also called welfare. So wealth and welfare have to go hand in hand. But also we have to remember that there's a cost also, and therefore we need to preserve, we need to conserve, we need to take care of our surroundings which are there. So whatever is there, the resource allocation that is there, also there's a determination of aggregate economic activity. But economic activity has to be sensitive to the surroundings. But this approach is the one which is talking about the progress, profit. And it's very popular with the international relations subject, resource management, and other subjects also dealing with the finance, commerce, and so on. It has long history and numerous interpretations. And the different people who have worked in it, and the academicians include Smith, Ricardo, Malthus, Mill, Marx, and so on. So what does it study? It studies the interaction of democratic political process and the market determined economic relations. Remember, market determined economic relations and the further interrelations. The approach takes into view the historical structural stance incorporating within its framework, its structural institutional forces, and remember, your house, individual or household responses. 
to such factors in the wider political economy. And that's something so important. So for me, what I'm going to tell you is, you matter in conserving the resources. You are the one who ultimately decide which approach to follow, not only limited to my research, but also in my own living style. We cannot afford to be ignorant. We cannot afford to what is impacting that. We all have to join hands in hands in thinking of the W called welfare to the wealth. And that something is this approach which guides us towards. This approach largely stresses two things. Remember, two things. One is reordering social relations, which are so important. And ultimately, in case if we do that, it will solve my resource scarcity problem. So economic approach, resource scarcity, problem also can be approached if I become little sensitive. And how will I become little sensitive if I make changes in my behavior? And there comes my third approach called behavioral approach. It all started in 1970s largely when people were moving beyond the economic approach or the quantitative revolutions in 60s. So the focus upon the human dimension of resource management. It, so behavioral approach we're doing now, it includes who all? You and me. People, technical experts, private managers, and public managers. This approach emphasizes on behavior, how I behave. And the process is related to the human actors of the resource system. Sometimes I do not want to look cool. I want to spend more. I want to look lavish. I want to look greedy because I want to show off that is a problem. And what is required is a perceptual knowledge. This approach involves consideration of three basic aspects. Number one, environment choices, which I have around. Number two, alternatives, paper bag or a polythene. And the third, in case we look at it, what is the perception? And it eventually leads to decision making, which resource to use, which resource not to use. As alluded in other behavioral aspect of the studies, we find that number one, what is actually required is the assessment of the perceived knowledge of the environment, perception of alternate land uses. Do I have that also? Another poor farmer, can he afford luxury trains or luxury vehicles and all that? We have to find out. But ultimately, we have not to think only of the maximizing the profits. We have to look at the attitudes, present insights about resource management strategies. So the key word is the one that starts in behavioral is also P. From, per, from profit, we've come to perception. It's perception of mind, perception through our senses, sight, hearing, smell, and touch. How do we react to our individual resources? As geographers, we have definitely to observe different things which are happening around us. Farmer suicides, it's happening. Why? Because there's a problem with the resources around, and some people are becoming more greedy. And we have to take care of that. It's directly linked with the behavior of the resource management around. It's just that some people are having too much and some people are having very less. Natural hazards which are taking place. And our response is very different. If you remember that earthquake experience, it happened in Gujarat also. And it also it happened in Uttarakhand. Reaction of both the places was so different. Why? Because people reacted in a different way. Today, a poor farmer who has no even iota of an idea of technology would react in a very different way. Whereas somebody who has, who has in nearby all the technologies would react in a very different way. And we all actually need to understand this. So the task of resource management decision making has become more complex today, multidimensional. And what is important is a PAVE theory. PAVE, P-A-V-E, perception, attitude, value, and ethics. Ha, huh. ethics we're talking about in this century? Ha, huh. so let's think about it. So now we all have to work on the pragmatic reasons. So that, that means we all, you and me, and people around me have to get involved. Sources of, so now what is there that we need to do? We need to share. We need to learn how to share before making decision making. We have to be, absolve our greedy nature. We have to become a better judge of how to transfer not only our resources, but our knowledge also. A recurring theme in this approach is that experts are not the best judges as to what is desirable or necessary. Indigenous knowledge is that is the reason. Like, you know, a farmer may know much more than an expert who is from IAM graduate or a Harvard graduate because he can guide you 
she can guide you what is this local resource important. And that's something we all have to be sensitive and acceptable to those people who have so much of the knowledge with them. And so that means my decision making is becoming more complex. Behavioral approach suggests many steps for acceleration of social science research in the resource management field as other research fields also. And you know, in these five areas, you'll also agree with me totally. Number one, identification of the nature and magnitude of resource problems and of the demands for resource related goods and services. Of course, we need to know that. Two, the delineation of alternative strategies. Do I have any alternative strategies? Or no, I'm a poor person. I have to be around this. Number three, I have to highlight those policies of the institutional framework. I have to examine alternative views in cases they are there. I also have to find the development of the most sophisticated techniques. That means intervention of those technologies is also very important. So behavior, behavior at one hand, is also having an intervention of the technology. Let's come to the fourth approach. Now what is this approach? This is an integrated approach. Integrated resource management incorporates four elements in case if you talk about. Number one, multiplicity of the purpose, means and participant strategies. Number two, blending of various resource sectors. And number three, the use of resource management as a mechanism for social and economic change. And number four, striving for accommodation and compromise. And that's something which is so very important. As a concept, we all know we talk about integration, holistic nature, it's a well-established management. But do we actually understand when it comes to my near and this thing we all have seen in all those big lavish weddings, are we thinking of resource management? We know how to do it. So, we are, so now what we need to think of three things, normative, strategic or operational levels, we always have to remember that there is a need for natural resource management. What is this normative level? Normative level is the one that we consider your underlying decisions. The definition of desired ends and ideas and decisions that determine what ought to be done. Number two is the strategic level. Strategic level includes analysis and evaluation of alternative goals and objectives. Alternatives. Selection and design of means to attain desired goals and decisions that determine what can be done in case if it is not there. And lastly, the third, an operational level. It takes into account plan implementation, purposeful actions, interventions to affect change, and decisions that determine what will be done. Resource appraisal, management, and resource development. What do we all know plays a very important role in all kinds of development activities? And that's something which we all have to remember. And in the maintenance of ecological balance within the watershed of the river basin, what is the watershed? We all know the one, that catchment area, which has a single outlet. And that's something which is so very important. And the comprehensive development and planning of river basin is the one example where integrated resource management is taking place. And we all have to think of that. The river basin forms a biogeographical system where you have the functional holistic integration, you have financial integration, you have behavioral integration, you have physical integration, and the process response system is so dynamic in nature, even if you want, that natural interplay of integration cannot go wrong. And the development and management of resources is something which can be done in different ways. Number one, of course, the physical united nature brings it to be also called a multiple purpose economic region. In modern times, what we see, we see approaches to the planning for the development of water resources have progressed today. From single purpose use of water of river basin, such as irrigation, only flood control, generation of hydroelectricity, are there once upon a time. Today, what we have, courtesy technology, courtesy engineering techniques, we have the development of the total catchment area. And what are the terms which are there? We call it total catchment management. We call it integrated catchment management. We call it integrated resource management. And we also call it a river basin management. And we use it interchangeably. And we know that integrated watershed approach is something which is so very often we work in a, you know, in different research projects. Even for my PhD, which I had, I also use an integrated watershed approach. Let's come to now the fifth approach, which is so new. That is it institutional approach. All those above academic discussions will fail if we are not knowing institutional arrangements are so relevant in today's time just to absolve our existing stresses. 
This approach is biased to economic, political law, and business administration institutions, which emphasize the role of social, political, and economic organizations in determining economic events. I may be not wanting to just move from this place to another. I have to do it if my institutional policy arrangements are forcing me to do that. So now what is important is that in the resource management world, we need to tie it up with institutional structures, the patterns of agencies. We need to be aware about the laws and policies which pertain to resource issues. But are we? Check yourself in, inside. You're not. Even I am not. I'm teaching for 30 years. So let's get joint hands in becoming sensitive and even becoming partners in changing these uh, structures. So interaction, what we need, we need interaction between individuals and groups, legislation and regulation, policies and guidelines, administrative structures, political structures and processes, economic and financial arrangements, and historical and traditional customs and values. It's so important to be equal partners. E-Q-U-A-L. Yes, you can also be an equal partner. We need to be interested in institutional arrangements and the role in the management of natural resources. For example, in the desert grass or shrublands of Rajasthan, where multiple contending institutions govern village resources, the role of social institutions, those farmer community members, those panchayat members, the rules, norms, and systems of authority and power are overwhelming. Many research scholars like you have highlighted the institutional issues of natural resources, such as forests, water, grazing land in Rajasthan, or in other parts of India and the world, where special cases of extra legal resource management institutions exist. Are you ready to raise your voice for it? Which are posing, and these are posing so many challenges, and also so many corrupt practices. But are you ready to be sensitive towards it and raise your voice? Please do it. Next approach is only for that. That's called a community-based approach. It challenges the assumption that conservation is only possible through the exclusion of human activities. Of course not. This is a new and people-centered thinking in conservation and management, which gradually emerging, quite important among the developing countries, and of course, including India. Community-based approach is mainly derived from a political reaction against the environmental authoritarianism of the state. This is a paradigm shift towards decentralization at the policy level in resource management. Do we actually understand the meaning of decentralization in a top-down dictators? But we need to do that. And that's what this approach guides us for. In India, during the colonial period, we had that. But today, we are democratic. Last 70 years, we are there. We think of the participation and decentralization of resource management in contrast to top-down approach we need to currently practice. Local institution is given due recognition and decision-making is made open with equitable sharing of cost, benefits between the states and local communities. Are we having sharing? Check up your surroundings. It's believed that the local communities, especially those with a long tradition of resource use in particular area, hold in-depth knowledge and experience of wildlife and habitats. But do we value that learning? So now let's come today to the last and my favorite approach is a technological approach. Today, we all can have checks and balances through remote sensing and GIS, what we call geoinformatics. And that's something which is so very important. Today, in case if somebody wants to lie also that this was not there, remote sensing data will definitely tell us, no, no, please, it was there. Do a chain detection study. Use high resolution imagery. And you would be able to find out what was there once upon a time and what is missing. We can locate features. We can work out the extent of the coverage. We can monitor resource and generate models to probable scenario which assist in optimizing resource utilization, very important. What is resource management and what is remote sensing relationship? Remote sensing, if you've learned elsewhere, is OAP, object area phenomena. Remote sensing, those sensors which are there at the top, remember your EMR learning? They come and they tell you that, you know, we can definitely regulate objects, areas, and phenomena through remote sensing data. And the data that's generated 
overwhelming. We have big data today. We have tools and technologies to unveil that information. And today, nobody, in case if you have right intentions, you can create large inventory of land, water, and biomass resources, and can hardly be conceived and without satellite images, because today they are high resolution data. Today, you have data of the level of 0 0.6 meter resolution. And combining with that is geographic information system. There's no other effective and efficient measure to gather and disseminate uh, data about something which is around us. And also to find about, as I told you, in case if you want to do the scenario, GIS will help you. And GIS, of course, we know that CSGARD captures data, stores data, transfer, analyze, and also display data, display spatial data of resources. We need to develop our intentions right. We need to work towards sustainable management programs. We need to actually think I want sustainability. We want sustainability. We want future generations to grow together. Data management techniques are there. Geoanalytics ways are there. Community is there who is sensitive, who want things to go hand in hand. But are you? Are your people around you sensitive? We have Cartosat Dem data 30 meter resolution. My Indian woman gives me that. I have SRTM data, which is of 30 meters and again 60 meters data. I also have an Astra data of 30 meter resolution. And I, I also have, you know, the data in case we're working on USA, any D national elevation data set of three meters. Imagine three meters, 10 meters, 30 meters data is there. How can you go wrong about what is where and how much? We have our own IRS remote sensing satellites. Four are there in geostationary orbit, inset 3D, inset 3A, Kalpana, inset 3DR. 13 are in sun synchronous orbit. Resourcesat 2, Cartosat 1, 2, 2A, 2B, Resat 1 and 2, Oceansat 2, Scatsat, Carto. I mean, there is today, in case if anyone has right intentions, microwave sensors are there, radiometric and temporal resolution data sets are there. We also have our own Navic today. My GPS, I mean, facility is there. And of course, how can we go wrong with a mass mission? That means, let us join hands in solving the problem. Let's go and promise ourselves that today my GIS, Geographic Information System, will give me way on working towards making this planet a better place. Because this technology, I can lay, I can overlay, I can do network analysis, I can do so much work, I can create, simulate models, and I can give a lot of information to a policymaker, even a bureaucrat, even a minister, that, you know, this is the reality. Please spend money here. Managers, biologists, botanists, ecologists, environmental regulators, you, geographer, hydrologists, petroleum engineers, planners, foresters, are all relying on analytical power of GIS. And this is helping us in making critical decisions. GIS provides deeper understanding of the problem we face by giving accurate information. Decision makers need a complete picture of the issues before taking decisions. So tomorrow, dear students, when you become a decision maker, Please make use of this technology, not only for resource management, for other things also. Therefore, it has always been fundamentally that we all have to make use of it. So by now, all these seven things, future trends are there. But remember, they can only be there in case if we only want them. Food, water, clothing, everything that is something is around. If I actually am wanting sustainability, if actually I'm wanting that the world to be a peaceful place, a world to be there for my future generation, my children, just the way it should not be only in a fairy tale book, I have to make use of all those above approaches, which I just now told you all about. And you all have to remember them. You all have to think of them in terms of scale, in terms of scope, in terms of your own agenda, you have to create your own perspective and you have to take a journey forward so that we all definitely know that the supply and demand problems should not be there. I'm ready to change my style. So now what all we have learned? We have learned that natural resource management is today possible. I can think of nature. I can think of human being. I can think of integration. I can think of individual decision making. 
I can think of community-based intervention. I can think of institutional frameworks. I can think of everything that's around me. I can think of only developing countries. I can think of the developed nations. But remember, world is one. Resources are not knowing which country is it invading in. Resources are borderless. So my friends and my young participants, the ones who've gone through this learning till now, remember, you have to create a habit of natural resources which are around you and using them judiciously. Optimum utilization of resources can, is only possible in case if we take care of any one of the approach or take use of all those approaches together. I think so you would have enjoyed learning today and you would have remembered by now how much and you will be able to guide the people who are going wrong. It was a pleasure to be here with you all. Thank you very much and all the best.